Yeah, to quickly summarize what what the things that we discussed today. So we talked about the basic. Uh, so what is Spark? Why we need to go for Spark? Some of the Spark features that we talked and Spark uh, comparison with the Hadoop inside the MapReduce. So how does the Spark code? How simple? How concise the Spark code looks when compared to with MapReduce code, and how faster it will get executed when uh, we have seen one example uh, in both in MapReduce and as Spark Native and Spark SQL versus Hive example also we have seen. Okay, and uh, Spark Native with Hive example also we have seen. Okay, have given you the supporting uh, input documents and the coding. Uh, source code also for the yesterday's session. So that was just to uh, give you an impression that Spark is more concise and um, Spark is more concise and faster than your Hadoop need. Okay. So don't worry about the complete syntax of the Spark code there the, in the example that I have given you yesterday. Uh, you will get slowly understanding all that syntax once you are familiar with the Scala code. So you'll, you will feel easy to understand it. Okay. And now, as we have seen yesterday, the Scala programming, uh, the Spark programming can be done from different languages. So out of which the Scala is the most popular one. Uh, we have almost like uh, currently uh, three projects running in our client and all in all the places we are suggesting our clients also to go with the Scala programming language only because of its conciseness and clean syntax okay and Python Python is also um, I can say after Scala the more popular combination or more uh, popularly being used is Python along with Spark, even then Java. Okay. Yeah, but uh, first we'll go through the Scala concepts. And then when I discuss the Spark examples, the Spark programming, I will try to show you at least one or two examples in, in other languages as well. But my main concentration will be on Scala portion. Okay. Now to get started with Scala, so first we'll discuss about few points about the Scala. Then I will uh, help you in setting up the the necessary softwares on your machine, uh, meaning the VM setup. Okay, the VM setup and how to install your Scala on Windows machine and install Scala on your Linux, Linux box and to start practicing the basic the Scala commands, Scala program. Yeah, so let's uh, first discuss the few basics of Scala and then I will uh, show you the setup things, okay. So first we'll see uh, what is Scala and why we need to go for Scala. Um, yeah, Scala is also one another high level language which is built on top of the JVM and meaning it can run on the Java virtual uh, machine. The underlying component for your Java programming language for executions is the JVM. That that makes your Java, lang uh, Java language platform independent, right? The JVM is separate for each distribution, but your code is common for all the distributions. Once the Java's notation is that write once and run anywhere. And the Scala programming language 
has chosen some of the best features of the uh, both the oops oriented languages and as well as the functional programming languages so i can say it like so scala is nothing but the combination of both java and python uh, so it inherited by in python it is mostly like functional programming language we call and this is oops only okay object oriented language so what scala did was like um it inherited all the best features from both the languages and uh it it, it started using both of them okay so that's why uh, whenever we say about the features of scala the main features see are that it is both functional and as well as object oriented so that is one one of the strongest reason why people go for it and the second thing is this is also platform independent uh, because the underlying the execution engine is the jvm it runs on the same jvm since it runs on the same jvm with re with respect to performance point of view the speed of execution you don't see much difference between your scala and java okay so some people will be under impression that scala will run faster than your java obviously not okay because anything uh, yeah let, let me first tell you spark key is written on uh, written in scala programming language but internally scala itself is written in java okay the way you know that uh, the assemblers are very low level languages right so the next level high level languages are like cobol or c so the number of lines of code will get reduced the underlying functionality whatever you are doing in cobol will again be uh, being done through the registers or something the same registers pointers so they will get converted into that machine languages so similarly the java or something the more high level languages that you go um, that becomes very easier for the developers and less development efforts and better understanding of the programming language readability my main point is the uh, readability of the programming um are the main features as you go with the higher level higher level languages okay yeah um so it is mainly object oriented plus functional programming the statically typed uh, programming language meaning um unlike your python uh, python i think even the dynamic dynamically typed uh, features are supported in python statically typed means if you declare any variables or methods the written types or the variable data types will get decided at the time of compilation itself okay not at the run time they will get decided at the compile time itself okay and comparable to java with respect to speed and one other good advantage with scala is that it very well interoperates with java meaning you can use any java class 
inside your Scala code. And similarly, you can use any Scala class inside your Java, Java classes, vice versa. Okay, we'll see these examples also in our uh, Scala Scala training by the end of Scala training course. We'll see the examples where we are calling the Java code from Scala and Scala code from Java. And the or the main father or the inventor for this Scala programming language is Martin Ordosky from EP 